Have any of you seen the documentary Restrepo? Uh, first, I recommend the documentary to everybody because it is, it is that. It's a documentary. It's not a docudrama. It is not the Hurt Locker. It is not uh, the SEAL movies that are out there right now. This is Sebastian Younger and Tim Hetherington, uh, Pulitzer Prize winner, uh, and in both cases they are for the, for the books uh, in, in pictures that they do. And Tim, and they're both junkies. They are both just like soldiers. They have, they have spent time in the small wars around the world, and Tim was recently killed in Libya. And I had the great privilege to go uh, to his funeral and meet his family and his dad and, and, and talk with Sebastian about this. But if you watch that movie, you learn a lot about what soldiers experience in war. Uh, now, it's a unique environment in the Korangal Valley where they spent 15 months together. But the video captures the human element. It captures the camaraderie, the cohesiveness. It captures the boredom where one of these young sergeants is crawling around on a 50 caliber machine gun having a conversation with his friend about his family's farm back home while, they, while, they're, while they're bored. They do interviews in there that talk about how they can't replicate the high that they have in combat in life. Now, why am I telling you about that movie and why am I telling you about these things? Um, it's right here, uh, and, and, it, and it couples with the fact that once every 36 hours, an active duty Department of Defense soldier is taking his own life. This is the greatest force that we have ever assembled in the world with the most educated young men and women in it who have just gone through the most complex set of experiences over the past 10 to 12 years and performed magnificently on the ground. Um, and they're taking their own lives at a rate that is so alarming, we don't know how to deal with it. Something's not right. So what is mu? If this equation is us, and in this case we'll say, this is team red, white, and blue over here. F equals m wave. Force equals mass times acceleration. Okay? And when you read the pamphlet, it'll tell you that the laws of physics say a body in motion will stay in motion, and a body at rest will stay in rest. And, and that's right here. And mu is a variable. Mu is based on surfaces, based on angles, all those kind of things, just like it says in there. But mu is composed of, in us, in this human being, it's composed of, do I care, am I afraid, or do I have courage? I want to tell you the story about Patrick. Patrick uh, was a head trauma victim uh, in a vehicle accident, and, uh, and he had a brain stem injury, uh, huge scarring, ended up in uh, John Hopkins University shock trauma unit. Uh, and this was years ago before they took a piece of your cranium out, dealt with it, and they, they basically put a pressure relief valve in your head in 1978 when this occurred. And so permanent brain damage ensues, learns to walk again. Uh, he, was a, he was a high school basketball player on scholarship to go to a local college. I mean, good looking kid, good athlete, future out there, whole life turned upside down, much like many of our, our veterans. Um, he really makes a, a reasonably remarkable uh, recovery. Like Mike says, he had family to support him. He had school. He had friends. They were all there at this point in his life. And he was able to crawl out of this debilitating injury. He was able to drive again. Uh, he had uh, you know, permanent tremor and huge scarring. But his brainstem injury meant that he could learn nothing new and retain it. He, uh, I mean, it wasn't exactly, uh, you know, living each day over and over again. But Patrick remembers everything that happened for the first 18 years of his life in extraordinary detail. And everything after that comes in and out based on things. Patrick was having trouble coping because girls didn't like him. He was 18 to 20. 5, 30 years old in this time frame. He couldn't hold the job. He turned to alcohol. He's in the state of Maryland. He got three DUIs. Finally, after three DUIs, the state of Maryland took his driver's license away. Um, when he couldn't work and he couldn't drive, he kind of spun down. The Reagan administration turned off his 
Social Security benefits because TBI in 1985, you talk to Patrick and have a conversation with him and he's, he's fine. He's just having Groundhog Day with you tomorrow and having the same one. So the way we looked at people, the way we tested them, and you see that with many veterans out there who have challenges, they seem fine. And behind them is this mass of problems that we're unaware of, that we're not looking for, and we're not peeling back the layers of what's going on. Patrick falls into the pit of drinking, falls into the pit of no friends, now has new friends who are drug addicts. He lives in the woods. He steals from the supermarket for a living. Uh, his parents get divorced. His father dies. His mother can't support him and the two other kids at home, and he's out on his own. Uh, he wanders around. He now is a habitual criminal offender. His 20 years have passed, and the police don't feel sorry for him anymore. The judges who have seen him don't feel sorry for him anymore. He's transposed from this person with an injury, with a future, who was kind of a local basketball hero that everybody was helping him, wanted to help, to habitual offender criminal. Uh, his mother died. His family uh, was waiting for him at the funeral. And he had been arrested the night before because two girls had uh, attacked him. Uh, and he had an old beat up shotgun. He swung it around. He was arrested for aggravated assault. He's in the Maryland. Uh, you know, head injury rehabilitation system now because he was found not competent to stand trial after we've learned so much in 32 years about head trauma, about injuries, about how to take care of people um, that they understood. But there was, there was no one there for him. Patrick's my brother. It's a, it's a horrible story to tell, but I was never home. And my sisters and brothers... I mean, they got to the point where he was such a habitual alcoholic, he was such an habitual offender, he put pressure on my mom, and they said, I don't want to have anything to do with you. There was nobody there. There was no team red, white, and blue. The family fell apart as the support network around Patrick. And all of a sudden, you're all looking there at the end of your life going, how do we let this happen? Because there wasn't anybody there. The difference between what you're trying to do in what other veteran support organizations do is you want a lifetime network connection to community. Because that's what, that's what people need. They need that community. Whether that community uh, is staying in the Army and we clean up what we're doing there so that we can take care of our own problems inside of that, whether it's your hometown, whether it's the running club. For me, when I retired, I gave a speech about the three tribes that were affected in my life throughout my career. I mean, I, I told folks, I, I have my, my family, my biological family. I got issued them. They love me. I love them. No choice. We work through those things. But that's not where I go for solace and support. I had my Army family, this huge Army family built over 35 years of connections. And when the Vice Chief of Staff of the Army said, Frank, we've, your service has been wonderful. It's time to go. We shrunk down my life to this little ball, just like every other veteran who leaves. And now I have another sphere out there. And I always had this backup sphere for me. It was the rugby program. I was involved in rugby since I graduated from college. Uh, everywhere I went, I did that. And I had a network that I could fall right in on. There were as many rugby players at my retirement as there were military professionals. Many of them were the same kids I coached at West Point in rugby and things like that. The power of having an alternate network, having something to be redundant, something to take the place of that nurturing, that connection, that community is exactly what you're trying to do. And this is what it takes. It's all about Mew. So if our mission is to enrich the lives of veterans by connecting them to their communities through physical and social activities, then all we have to do is overcome you to do that.